I am grateful to Dean Morrison for it, the invitation to give what she calls my farewell address to the college. <laughs> as, uh, as many of you realize, I do know a, a thing or two about the history of this college. <laughs> I have watched generations of college students walk in and out. And I dare say I began my freshman year at a college not unlike Barrington. Oh, it was 1966. Can you believe I was alive in 1966? Can I believe it? <laughs> well, I was, and it was a very good year, so to speak. LBJ was president, and the, oh, the escalation of the war in Vietnam had barely started. No, it would take another two years for that savagery and madness to take hold as we watched young men being mowed down night after night on the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Blood and guts in Technicolor. It was stunning and it turned the tide of public opinion. And soon we were marching in the streets. I joined in. We, we marched on Washington, on the Capitol. It was quite shocking. Well, at least it was shocking to my parents. <laughs> the 60s slid into the early 70s. And I believed, silly me, that Love and peace would descend like doves and land on everybody's shoulders. A green world had begun. <laughs> Make love, not war. Dick Nixon before Nixon dicks you. <laughs> but then came the 80s. At the me decade. <laughs> yes. And I, I recall having tea with a student in his dorm room. Uh, this uh, student was an economic major, and he had a poster of Donald Trump on his wall. The art of the deal had captured his imagination. <laughs> oh, how little we realized what would come in just a few decades. Oh, I miss the 60s. I miss the students calling the question again and again, forcing their elders to state their positions. It was a brave new world, as the bard once nicely put it. And I felt it slipping away. <laughs> Slip slide in away. At least the uh, the hopeful aspects. And by the nineties, it was all wrong. The uh, <clears throat> the more conservative people in uh, my generation of college students went into politics or business and wound up at the White House, in Congress, in local government, on Wall Street. They took control. Whereas people with more revolutionary ideas like me went not into government, but into English departments. Oi vey. As the saying goes. <laughs> After the disaster of 9-11 in 2001, we found ourselves with a mess on our hands. An idiot president invaded Iraq in what he called a war of choice. 
The ensuing calamity was predictable, and yes, predicted, but yet it happened. And we killed hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians and displaced a million more or so and destabilized the Middle East for decades, and it is still a catastrophe. <laughs> but hope kept popping up. <laughs> you remember Bill Clinton, the man from hope? Do you remember President Obama? Yes, we can. Well, we couldn't. Or didn't. <laughs> I am glad to say that the Trump years were a brief interlude of madness. The worst instincts of our country were given voice and we all pay dearly. That was before many of you were born. Hmm. It, it is good to be here among so many young people, all so hopeful still. I always say the American people got a good start in the late 18th century. Our founding fathers were bright in their ideas Stirring. But where did they go? At least in 2026, the Supreme Court finally understood that the Second Amendment did not give every Tom, Dick, and Harry the right to own an automatic weapon of mass destruction. One flintlock per household. That's what they meant. The framers of our founding documents, and it is good that you do not remember that crazy people used to gun down kids in schools, innocent people in shopping malls, at movies, in, in auditoriums. So, yeah, a, a few good things did happen. It was too bad about the bomb. We should have understood that you cannot play with nuclear weapons and not get hurt. How many people died? Um, uh, <coughs> I, I, I won't go there. As this is my uh, swan song and meant to be sweet. But you'll forgive me if I say, I told you so. We, we were spared in this part of the country, and there has been some effort to restore normality in the last decade. Your parents and grandparents will explain. Oh dear, I should end on a note of hope, shouldn't I? Well... We are on a better path now. <laughs> the Electoral College is at last a thing of the past, and, and, and nobody would, would dream of running for public office without some humility, am I right? Look around. Look around you, see your friends, and ask yourself what you can do to serve them and not yourself. I ask you, no, I beg you only to read books again. You will find them in the basements of the library in special collections and they let you take them out for a few days. Once people held them in their hands without thinking it an amazement. Remember computers? No. Oh, your parents will explain. Oh, yes, museums display them proudly. Look at what used to hold our attention. 
What? You couldn't just talk to your friends by yelling into your palm? Books just didn't appear fully absor absorbed and neatly shelved in the lobes of your cerebral cortex? <laughs> I quote again, oh, brave new world. I wish I could teach for another 10 years. But um, my eyes are weak and my spirit less than perfectly aligned with the current age. So, uh, so thank you for coming to say goodbye to me today. You're not farewell. Just uh, goodbye for now. <laughs>